This pistol here's smooth bevels and clean looking finish is the kind of result we're going to get from our tutorial today. Just on a simpler mesh, and you can then take these skills and apply them to your more complex hard surface models. What you're looking at here is me creating a simple mesh that will exemplify the issues with Blender's traditional bevel. These issues do not exist within ZBrush's system of polishing the mesh that we'll be using today to create outstanding hard surface results. So first of all, let's look at the issue we normally confront. I'm going to add a bevel to the model using hard ops, and we can see immediately we have some triangles drawing out here and over geometry overlapping itself, and parts where we don't even get a bevel that we quite like. This is what requires to go in and do manual markings, adjust the topology, and even then we wouldn't get as good results as ZBrush can deliver. So, let's just take this bevel off, we really don't need it. And the other thing we are going to need for preparation is a triangulate modifier. Because ZBrush cannot handle end guns, we need to do that before we import it into the software. Now we've got the triangulate modifier, we're all good to get on exporting this model. So, very standard export process. All we want to do is export it to an FBX file into our project directory. For me, that's videos, ZBrush polishing. And I'm just going to export the mesh object here. No particular special settings needed. I just changed it to mesh because I don't particularly want any other data. And selected objects so I don't bring my cutters with me from hard ops and box cutter. I'm just going to call this what it is, just, just a uh, test sheet. And I'm going to export this out as an FBX file, which is the best format for interchanging between Blender and ZBrush due to the fact that it consistently keeps scale. Alright, let's move over to ZBrush and import the file. So, let's look at the first of two methods to polish this mesh. We're going to just go to the Geometry tab over here and simply click on the DynaMesh. This is DynaMesh star mesh. Merge these parts together nicely with some extra topology around the edges and create a larger amount for us to work with when we use our deformation polish. Simply click on the deformation tab here and make sure the circle to the right of deformation shows up similar to on my screen as this version provides the best results when polishing. You can click it to toggle. To activate the polish, simply grab the orange slider and just drag it to the strength you want to apply and release. And let's do that again. A couple of polishes is the best way to play with it until we get a good result. Now this is a pretty good result. But you can see, we're getting a bit of artifacting around the edges. So I'm just going to do Control d to subdivide the mesh again, and apply another, stronger polish. The more dense topology you have, the stronger you will need to polish your mesh. You see here, we've got some pretty good results. But there's a few issues. Some parts like this sticking out. Let's look at the second method, in order to create a higher quality polish. So this time, instead of using the DynaMesh we used the first time, we're going to get rid of that, and we're going to use the Z remesher. Now we need to pick some settings here. We definitely want it to detect edges and keep creases. This will allow it to pick the sharp edges around the mesh when it creates the new topology. And we're going to change the target poly count up to about 10. You're going to want to play with that and do a few trial and errors to see about what gets you the, personally the best results. Now I've got a decent result of the board here, but you can see there's a few errors that indicate to me I'm going to need to increase the target poly count again. So I'm going to try it as high as 25. Oops. I made a mistake there, I accidentally masked my mesh. Let's see, these are some pretty good results. But I think I'm just going to go a little bit higher, really get the best I can do. I'm going to push it all the way to 45. Yep, that's the stuff. Now, it's a pretty good mesh, but I'm just going to subdivide it one time, just to make it a bit cleaner. Now, we can head to the deformation tab and begin to use the polish to make this a lot smoother. And give us our bevels we're looking for. Again, I'm just going to make sure this is on the right setting. I'm going to apply the polish quite gently to this one. Because it's not got as much topology as the DynaMesh version. Now, this is a much smoother finish. Really the kind of thing we're starting to look for. Now, we do have a couple of little issues down here, but that's alright. We have some manual tools here. I'm just going to press B to bring up the mush brush menu. I press D and then S to choose the damn standard. Turn the intensity very low. And then just use this to ever so care. Whoops. I accidentally undid a few parts there. Just use this to ever so carefully polish in some of these edges here to make sure they match how I want things. I'm going to use it on the inverse by holding Alt, polish out this one here, and then smooth over it. This kind of quick fix as well, really not be too important in most situations as rarely you will have enough of an error to warrant doing it. But they improve the results to be an almost perfect bevel across the whole thing. Certainly significantly higher quality than what you're getting in Blender. 
That's all. Thanks for watching. Hopefully some of these tricks and tips will be useful for you. And if they are, why don't you just drop a like and stick around by subscribing for the next video. Thank you very much.